Well, hello and welcome to another Dev Nation Tech Talk. I'm excited to have all of you guys with us today. Hopefully you're seeing our stream momentarily as it hits our YouTube live stream. We're broadcasting from Blue Jeans, that's Commission Iron Blue Jeans, and we've routed it out to YouTube. We're trying some different tech to basically see how the experience will be. And oh, I got a microphone that's hot over here. Turn that off. Fantastic. So we are basically going to be live for the next 30 minutes or so. We're going to be talking about Knative. We're going to be talking about the Knative cookbook, celebrating the launch of that book just this past week. We just finished up Red Hat Summit, virtual summit. Hopefully you guys got a chance to see that yesterday. Uh, so I'm happy to have that behind. We had a chat about that already in the chat. I see so many people here that we know already. James, good to see you again. Wayne, fantastic to have you here. Good to see you all, Ben, fantastic. All great to have you all. Thank you so much for showing up today. We're gonna to be dealing with Kamesh, the Kamesh. He's the Kamesh at this point. You got to, You should know that. But Kamesh is gonna be talking about Knative and how we can do serverless architecture on top of Kubernetes and OpenShift. And he, is our resident expert. And let, let me be very clear, while my name is on that book too, Kamesh did all the heavy lifting here and is our superhero when it comes to preparing for that book. But I thank you all for being here. And what I want to do right now is turn it over to Kamesh and let him get started with the presentation. Thanks so much, Burr, for having me today. So uh, before I go to my presentations and my demonstrations, uh, I take this moment to thank Burr uh, who did his guidance helped me to get this book out on time and then and all the complete uh, team which helped me to get this book as well uh, and the Red Hat engineering team who helped me to, uh, get my technical stuff validated book as well and finally the publishers Aurel helped me to get this my first book out. I'm really excited um, obviously you see my excitement on my talk as well and I'm going to show you quick demos from the book and obviously leave you to read the book and do the demos it's going to be exactly same like what I'm going to do on my screen. Um, with that, so I'm just going to quickly run through a few slides which I have. Probably you can grab the slides of this particular talk from this um, the link which I have right below. I think uh, I'll ask Burr will be putting those links on the chat as well. That's going to be dn.dev slash 4k Kubernetes. Like I'm going, we are going to take the 4k to Kubernetes right now. And we have Knative, Kafka, and Camel for you to show today. And what we have, and we are also having an up, upcoming DevNation schedule. Probably let's put down this on the slides. When you download the slides, you'll be able to see those uh, schedule which is coming up. We have a lot of classes, a lot of stuff is going to is going to help share with you as well. So you can go log on to that as well. Um, and then this is the real hero of today. This cookbook, the first ever book which is written by me and then the great help from Burr and the great compliments from Red Hat developers and Red Hat on the whole. So you can download the book from there. So it's a free download for you when you get to our site dn.dev slash knative cookbook. That's the place where you can download this book from. So what you have done in this book is like we have put down all our experiences when learning this particular technology when it was out and we thought about it, put it in a cookbook style. We have a problem solution and discussion kind of thing which may, which I hope that it will help you to get your serverless solutions on the way. But before we go further, so I just want to say like what's in agenda for today. So I'm just going to touch uh, briefly on Kubernetes, the first style of how do you deploy an application in Kubernetes. Most of you might be knowing that, but I want to drive the basics saying why we do Kubernetes and why we do Knative and what does Kafka and Camel has to do with this, right? So that's the whole agenda of today. So that's going to be 20 to 25 minutes of demo uh, and then maybe five, and five minutes of Q&A as well. You can also pop your questions up on the chat. Uh, We'll keep answering your questions as well. And in case there needs to be a stop, but you can call me out. I can I can stop to answer your questions as well. So with that, so let's see why we need Kubernetes, right? So the first and foremost thing I'm going to say today is that so this is the way of thing why we need Kubernetes, right? So we have been doing monolithic all these days, and still people are doing monolithic. But the moment microservices fever catches everybody, so everybody wants to go microservices, right? That's where all the thing about Kubernetes started. We want to have scale. We want to have run multiple applications. We want to have applications run together, automatic service registries, and all lots and lots and more, right? Probably you can hear more on us on our master courses that we run every week on DevNation. So let's start with this point, right? I want to say, okay, I want to deploy a very simple Hello World application in a Kubernetes. That's where I'm going to start story is right so let me go straight to my terminal and then show okay let me start my i'm on openship console that's going to let me show you the openship console as well let me stop my slide share go to my um topology view this is my openship platform running on azure so this openship 4 4.4 the bleeding edge build is going to be i think probably we should have been out by now so or any time now so that's that's your console you're seeing from OpenShift. So I'm going to go deploy my first application on OpenShift with Kubernetes, right? So let's see what this application has. 
So this is going to be a very simple uh, application for you. Uh, let me go there and show you. So any any Kubernetes application you take for this matter. So all you do is like uh, let me this out uh, this one out as well on my screen. Okay, that's great. So um, so what we do is basically when you start your application deployment on on Kubernetes, right? So the basic two things which you write. The first one is going to be your deployment. Where I specify multiple stuff. For example, I'm just going to deploy an eventing hello because I'm going to show an eventing demo later. So I thought I would deploy this application first. That's going to be an eventing hello. And then this is going to deploy an image called as uh, Red Hat developer slash eventing hello, right? That's just going to say hello, hello kind of stuff, right? So this is the first thing which you write. Any Kubernetes deployment, when I move from monolithic or microservice, I containerize my application. And this containerized application is what you see here, right? This is what I'm going to deploy first. All right, so for this application to be accessed, the next thing which you always do is I'm going to write an hello service. Obviously, this is service is going to be exposed and using a load balancer here so that I get an IP address so that I can call the service from outside, right, in the public way, right? This, this is what I'm going to do right now. Let me go to my console and then do this one. I say kubectl apply dash f. I'm on a work directory, so you should see two things getting created. So I'll just say watch get pods. You'll see a pod getting created and let's also see if my container uh, also get my service up. So service takes a bit of time uh, because I need a load balancing IP. So it takes a bit of time for this to come up, right? So that's where your application is going to come up and then I'm going to get the IP and then I'm going to call the service outside, all right? So I can also have another way. Let's, uh, let's try to see if I'm able to get this here or I can go to my OpenShift console um, and then go to my administrator view. And then let me create a route. This should be much faster than waiting for that to happen. So I should say uh, my uh, eventing hello. So that's my thing which I'm going to call right now. Pick up this service and then say target port. And then I'm not going to create a service route. Let me see if I call this. And this is what you need, right? So you get this application up and running, right? In a fraction of seconds. This is what Kubernetes gives you, right? Rather than earlier where you are deploying my application, I have to build my application, deploy it into application server. Any change I have to make, I have to redeploy. And all these things has been alleviated with Kubernetes. I have more information on why and what problems this Kubernetes alleviates on the slides. I leave you that for the offline read. So this is what I do. But it'll be one thing like this, okay, I'm doing one service or two service, right? But every time, what happens, this service keeps running. So I'm going to leave the service running. So this service has started 78 seconds back. I'm not going to do any changes to this. This service is keep on running forever, forever, right? It's not going to be stopped unless until I'm going to kill that up, all right? So what I want to achieve next is like, so let me go to my slides and tell you what I want to do. So I don't want this thing, right? If you are a cloud constraint nowadays, like everything is running on cloud, the problem right now, what happens to you is that this deployment model where I have to create a service, I have to create a route, I have to create a service XML, multiple YAMLs together. So I have to keep putting everything together, right? So this is going to be a, a tedious job for every developer because they have to start writing all these stuff. This is one. Point number two is like whenever I'm going to run it on a cloud, this is going to run forever, right? So because unless until somebody kills it, which means that it's going to consume the cost, whether there's going to be usage or not. This is not the right model which we want to go today because when we move everything to cloud, we want to be optimal on what we use for the cloud. That's exactly why your serverless comes into picture. In serverless, what I have, I have a fine-grained deployment model and then it's going to be executed, scaled and built to exact demand. So that's what the serverless computing is all about. That's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to take the same workload and deploy native, which is a, which is a platform to run serverless workloads on Kubernetes and I'm going to do it exactly on OpenShift again. So I'm just going to do that and then show you that it's going to be terminated when I'm not going to use it, right? That's something which is very interesting for us. Let's go do that. Let me go back to my command line again and I'll show you what file I have. So this is going to be pretty much interesting when I said fine grain deployment model. So I want to show you what my deployment model looks like. Okay, so when you, when you let me put these two guys on this side so that I can have a comparison for you. Um, so if you see, when I deploy the same service, this is the same eventing hello application which I deployed earlier. So, so when I deployed this application, I had a deployment first created, so which has the same image as you see here, the hello one and the eventing hello here as well. And then what happened is I also go and created a service as well, right? And I had to give a lot of mappings like your selectors and labels and all these stuff. So which is sometimes there is a lot of error prone and it's also tedious, right? It's going to be exhaustive. So right now what I'm going to do is like I'm going to go into fine deployment model which I explained earlier. Now Knative serving, so which this particular service, I'm just going to write only this little template spec. Okay, this can, there's more uh, parameters is possible, so we'll come back to the auto scaling thing later, but don't worry about this, but this is all I need to write, right? For example, in this case, I have 22 lines plus 
11 lines, which is 35 lines of YAML. Instead of 35 lines of YAML, I'm going to just write 12 lines of YAML and I'm going to achieve the same thing, right? Which is, which is much easier way. So this is what I mean by fine grain deployment model. Let's go do this, okay? So let me go here. CD, I'm going to go to my tutorial home and then I'm just going to go to a different folder. So all these are part of the links which Bird would have pasted on the chat. It's as part of the tutorial. It's part of this uh, slides as well. You can see them. You can just follow the tutorial and do this. And even the book has these commands in place. So I'm just going to go and then say kubectl apply. And then I'm going to say uh, it's eventing hello sync. That's exactly what I right now. Now you see this. So this is going to be created in a fraction of seconds right now. And you have an eventing hello created. And also, I did not create a service now, but what happens right now if a two candidate service I should get a new URL for this service. You see this here? This URL is right there. And then when I go copy this URL, and then I say kubectl, or sorry, uh, HTTP, uh, and then I'm going to call this URL again. So I'm going to get a response back saying hello world. This is exactly the JSON response which we got earlier on the browser for the previous service. Same image, but only thing is that I, this service is started 29, 31 seconds back, right? I just gave a call 29 seconds back. While I speak and while I talk, what you can also see right now is the service is going to go out of your thing, right? I'm not going to give a call, typically mimicking that I'm not going to have any kind of service interaction, which means my service is not used. And that's what I mean by build and executed only on demand, right? I'm not going to give any call, maybe for a few more seconds, once, once you watch this, and the service is going to go off. Your cost cloud cost is saved. That's exactly what I mean on my slides here. Let me quickly go back to my slide. And this is what the benefits you get. And I'm just going to get an agility, event driven. We'll talk about event driven in a second. Focus on business differentiation and consistent and scalable operations. And this is what is going to drive towards your resource and cost optimizations when I go to serverless. All right. In this case, what I have done is like K Native is not a function as a service platform. It's just a serverless platform which can run any serverless workloads for you, which means that I can port even my existing monolithic applications into serverless world. Okay, so let's give a few more seconds for this guy so that like it starts to terminate and then you'll see the termination happen on this. And you can also have the same field from the console as well. If you go to the OpenShift console here and let me go to the developer view and I'm clicking on this eventing hello stuff right here. So since we gave a call some time back, like it calculates approximately 60 seconds from there to bring this service down. Let's see if service is coming down in a second. So once the service is down, it will go back to a few more stuff. While this is happening, so what I also wanted to show, this is not very interesting, right? I'm just going to give a HTTP call and service making, the service calls happening over the thing. This is not going to be very interesting real-time real use case scenarios, right? In real time, what I want to do is like, I want to take the service up and running based on my events, right? external events, which, I, which I'll be calling. So let me go and do this. So let me go and create an event. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to deploy Kafka, Apache Kafka right now. You see this application going down. It's terminated because it's not used. And when I give a call back, we'll replicate that in a second. It'll, it's going to come back. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do right now is that so I'm going to trigger an event in Kafka and then I'm going to get the event here, right? That's what the whole demo, next part of the demo is going to be. So to do that, what I need to do is like I need to up, deploy Kafka. To deploy a Kafka, I'm going to use a framework called a StreamZ. Okay, StreamZ is there right now. If you go to the browser uh, and I go to my slides and then I'm going to show here, I'm going to Apache Kafka here and StreamZ is the framework which I'm going to use here. So I have the URL placed on the slides. You can go to the slides, a set of operators that allows you to deploy Kafka on the fly, right? It's going to deploy a Kafka like this. For me, it's all ephemeral for now. I'm not going to use any persistence because considering the time we have right now. So let me go and deploy Kafka, kubectl apply dash f, uh, Kafka broker my cluster, and then I'm going to deploy that in a namespace called Kafka, right? So um, a dash f, okay, this is going to be apply here. Just go and go there. There we go. So my cluster is get, getting created. So let's go and watch that from the OpenShift console. If I go to my Kafka namespace, and you just see the Kafka is coming up now for me, all right? So how do you query Kafka? Let me sue this kubectl get Kafka's uh, if n from the Kafka namespace. Uh, I'm sorry, my command again, kubectl. You see, there is one Kafka right now here, which is one cluster and desired replicas is one. And one. I'm just having a very minimal Kafka created for us right here. So let's see if it's come up. So let's say kubectl. Uh, TTL uh, get pods if n Kafka. 
Okay, so I'm just going to get a Kafka pods listed here. So I have one zookeeper cluster and it's still coming up. So that's going to come up in a second. I have a class, Kafka cluster and a zookeeper running in fraction of seconds. This is what the stream Z kind of framework can do for you. You can run Kafka and in seconds on your Kubernetes cluster. And then you can also scale up and scale down as easily as possible. How do I scale up and scale down? So let's see once this is up. So let's go and watch if this up. I have I have a cluster created here. So I have a Kafka zookeeper one let me see what how many uh thing which i kept for this uh, kafka one here so let me go to my thing my kafka broker so i had one replica so i'm just going to run this again so i have one replica for this and one replica for zookeeper so you're going to have everything up and down for you right now so let's go and see what happened to my kafka cluster here so i should get a kafka up and running in a second uh, so let's go get Kafka get port and name kafka I have the one desired everything is running for me right now so let's go here check it out once more this is running my cluster kafka is running the operator is also running right so everything is ready so how do i check this out i have a, a kafka producer and a consumer uh, thing typically we do here i just get into this producer i'll also start being kafka consumer these are small producer and consumer parts which allows you to send and receive messages that's what i'm going to do i'm just going to type hello world I hope I get the hello world back here. Let me wait for the Kafka consumer to be up uh, in a second. So, uh, so let's see the consumer hub. Uh, so let's go back and see on the what pods I have on this namespace. They should also get the same thing in the same namespace as well. So let me see the consumers take time. Okay, so go and try consumer again. So this is terminated and then let me go and bring back the consumer um, hope this comes up well in a second so oh come on come on come on so okay let's go let's keep proceeding I can like I can check you I can show the same thing in another demo as well so right now what I can do is like I can also list the topics on my Kafka so let's for the for the simplicity's sake what I will also do is like I can also edit Kafka right edit uh, edit dash n kafka my clusters i'm just going to edit my kafka cluster here on the fly i'm going to change this one to be your maybe replicas 3 and then replicas 3 as well so that they are on the fly changes my replica so that i can have my kafka cluster increased in size right so let's go and see it here so it's going up for the three replicas right now it terminates the earlier existing one and creates a new one for you so which is going to happen on the fly right so if you see this kafka cluster I'm going to have three pods here. So let's go and watch this here on the administrator view. If we go back here and show you this one. So this is going to be workloads for you. And this workload is going to get created for you. All the clusters. And this is going to be on the fly, right? Which means it's so easy for me to change my Kafka cluster topology from zero. I mean, zero to three or three to five, five to six or how many ever you want. But this is what these operators and these things help me to do, right? The Steam Z operator exactly helps me to do this work. Let me watch this one from this as well while I, we do the other stuff. Cube got will get pods, uh, if and n. I'll say if and n Kafka. Okay. Uh, sorry, my command is wrong. Let me go here. There we go, right? We have a zookeeper, another two things coming up, and then we have one more Kafka coming up. It'll take some time for it to come because the thing is spread right there. And that's the thing which we achieve with this, right? So with this one, what you can also do is like and spread out the things. I can create the stuff and do all other things, right? This is so easy to create a Kafka cluster uh, with OMC. Let's see what else I have to show you today. That's part of the book. <clears throat> the another one which is interesting stuff which I want to show is like none of the application in the real world is without enterprise integrations. If you want to do enterprise integrations, one of the things the best Swiss Army knife for you is Apache Camel. So what we have done with Camel is like so just a brief introduction about Camel. Probably most of you know about Camel. So there is another project which is spawned up with Camel, uh, not Apache, which is called as Camel K. It allows you to the lightweight framework that allows you to run Camel integrations as your Kubernetes parts. Okay, that makes it so easy to build and deploy your Camel integration on the fly. That's a build and deploy. That's exactly what we are going to do. See now, with the last demo, which I'm going to show you right now, we're going to do an end-to-end. -end. So this lightweight integration platform, so what you can do is like I can code develop thing on the fly. I can change the code. I can deploy the code. I can develop the code. All right. So let's see quickly see how this also works. 
to do that i need to do one little installation let me go and do this here so i'm just going to do a camel install right now on my current time space so the camel is a cli that's used to do this work so I'm to say camel cluster setup it's going to take minutes for it to done so and then i little uh, thing here so let me stop this here uh, and then I need to edit my uh, thing to make faster cached few artifacts cube cuddle edit CM okay so I just need to edit this to change my maven settings to use my mirror uh, because I cache some images because we need to be a little bit faster for the demo so I'm just going to go cache this mirror so because I have a uh, Apache, I mean uh, Nexus, so not I have Nexus running on my local where I have cached all the things because Camel K behind the scenes download the Maven artifacts and builds the container and runs your Camel uh, context there. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to close this. This is saved. And then what I'm going to do right now is just show you how this native integration works, right? Let's go and do this. So I need more stuff before I go there. So let me go and inject this one. These are a little bit eventing later. I'm just in making inventing injected here. So the eventing is also get injected here. So I have Kafka clusters up and running and the zookeeper also up and running for me. So I'm just going to, I have the injection done right now. So I have the camel context labeled. So, and then next thing, what I'm going to do right now is going to run a fruit producer. So this is an example which I'm going to show you right now, which is, an end, which is, which is using a content based routing pack. I'm just going to deploy something like some messages will be streamed from Kafka using an external API. And then I'm going to use a couple of other eventing components, Kennedy eventing components to filter those messages and process those messages using camel and show those messages on your web browser. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So this is part of the book. If you read through the book, follow all the exercises, you can do this very easily. So that's going to be the case. So I'm just taking the examples from the book and then doing it here. I'm just going to run this thing. Let's watch pods here. Watch pods, kubectl gets pods. So I'm just going to say this one this is going to start okay so I need to go to tutorial home advanced camel K so that's a folder I need to start running this from so I start this does the build doing so it takes a bit of time initially so let's watch what's happening so if you see this I'm going to do a, a build image building done behind the scenes so that's going I'm just going to turn the logs to show you what exactly happens so there's a container getting created and then uh, maybe an artifacts gets downloaded Images gets built and then the image gets deployed right, as a container image. So that's what is happening behind the scenes. You see the reason why I used a Nexus here because every time this particular Maven artifacts get downloaded and built, so I cached all those things on my Nexus so that uh, when you run this, uh, I mean any application, any application build, that's going to be pretty fast. You see this image build is also happening. I'm creating an image based on uh, OpenJDK 8 and then it's going to be deployed right now. We having one creative service that's going to be deployed. So let's see, watch. Kubectl get KSVC that stands for Kennedy service. So I'm just going to watch it here. So once I watch here, so you'll see this uh, service getting updated here. So let me stop this and set. Uh, okay, I'm on a wrong uh, here. Is it R? That's the reason why my earlier things were not working. I have my uh, thing running right now, and then you can also see this here. So you should see this fruit producer running. The container getting created. And uh, let's stop this and then do. Of, uh, thing right so I'll just see this uh, that's been uh, dash bin Kafka consumer I should have my Kafka consumer right now you see this here so let's go to my Kafka I mean commands what command I need to give here I'm just going to send one little call to the producer just going to call this producer Kennedy service cube cuddle uh, get SVC SVC as you see the cube cuddle I mean I have the fruit producer uh, I'm just going to send the fruit producer here. So you should see a bunch of messages getting here onto the fruit producer. It goes, calls a third party API, gets a list of fruits and send this fruits as a JSON to you, right? That's what you're going to see right now here. Let me go and uh, call this one. I have to listen to a different topic. Uh, I was actually returning to a hello world topic here. So I'm just going to go and listen to the topic and you'll see this one coming up for you, right? So, uh, so let's know. Okay, so let me go here. So this right that uh, Alex to home. Okay, I just on a wrong tutorial home right now. Okay, I need a tutorial. Okay, and then you should see uh, the fruits thing getting the uh, the commands right now for you. Right, so let's like, give it a few more seconds for that to come.
And while we do this, what we'll also do is like I'm just going to deploy a few more stuff right now for you. Right. So this is going to do a fruit processor, which is going to split this stuff up for you. And then it's going to deploy this uh, this one right there. So let me go there and say deploy the processor. This is going to be a Knative capital resource. Knative has Knative eventing has a lot of resources defined. You can go and define your own resource. This is going and defining a Knative camel resource. If you see on this here, that's going to be a, that's going to be called as a fruit processor. So which basically is going to take this XML. So whatever the XML I have sent earlier. So this one, let me go and see if I get this messages from this uh, topic. So it's going to take those messages for you, and it's going to process the messages, and then it's going to send to a different URL, right? So that's what is going to happen. So let me see if I'm able to do this. Uh, okay, you see those things which is getting processed earlier. These were the earlier calls which I gave to get the fruits from an external level. I'm kind of simulating. This is not exactly same. Just kind of simulating this stuff. So we'll also do is like I'll just show you more uh, natively and interactively. So let me go here and deploy the the display, which is going to be a fruit display API. So let me stop this consumer so that like my message goes to my API. So and then I'm going to deploy a route finally so that I can have an URL to access this. So let me go and deploy this route. So the route gets created. So let's go and open the route from this one. So let me go and see uh, to my my demos project. And then once I go here, I should see the uh, fruit events display uh, service. And then I should have a URL here, right? So this is service. Let's see here. What I'm going to do is like when the message comes, I get a lot of messages. So one of the things I'm going to use event is that to kind of filter the messages, right? That's what I call this as a sugary fruit filter. There's a Kennedy eventing as a filter built in. So what I mean to say is like I'm going to process a message gets processed. I'm going to send a set of attributes as part of the message that going to camel is going to receive that. And once a message gets processed, it's going to filter all my types of low sugar things and then display only those fruits for me, right? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the data from external API, apply some filter using um, Kennedy eventing filters and filter these attributes based on cloud events. These are all cloud event attributes. I have more details on them in the book. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to pick up only the, the fruits which are of low sugar one. What I'm going to do right now, let me go and apply this trigger right now onto this namespace. Once I do this, let me go here um, and then say apply the trigger. And then in SA cube cuttle get triggers. You see the trigger and the trigger is now pointing to my fruits event display, right? I'm going to send this data to my fruit event display. And now when I pump the same data, which I did earlier, so getting the data and just kind of since it's not a real streaming data, I have to pump the data right now. I'm just asking, calling it from the external API, sending it to the processor, and then getting it back. So once I see this is uh, this fruit display is already done, so it's kind of creating again, it's not used, it's gone down to sleep mode. And let's go and see if I get the data on my API. I should say get that in a few seconds on the API, and then that's what happens. Right? I'm get, doing the complete content-based routing pattern implemented. It gets there, and then once it goes there, it gets through the filters, and the filter is going to send me one the the fruits which are of only uh, what do you call sugary fruits and low sugar fruits or something. Like that. So that's what is going to happen here. So let's wait for a few more seconds while that happens. Uh, but I think that's pretty much I have for the demo today. Um, and I have a bunch of resources put down for you. So whatever the commands are used today, everything is part of our Knative tutorial and other stuff. You can also register for our course, which is happening every week almost nowadays. You can just go register yourself at the dn.dev slash master. And also we are also having upcoming DevNation Tech Talks, which you can also go and register that for. Let's go and see if I got my response back. So let me take some more time. It takes some time for it to process. Uh, I do have a key question for you. Yeah. People want to know, and Alex in particular wants to know, or Alec, I should is what connects to what? It's a little bit unclear at the moment. So in other words, the consumer connecting to a Kafka topic, I think. Then, of course, there's a Camel K processor mm -hmm. on that Kafka topic. If you would just kind of enumerate what connects to what in okay. what order. Let, that, that's a very good question, but I think probably I can explain that, maybe like considering the time I was rushing a little bit. Let me do this. So the first one is a Kafka source, which is the first thing which you need to write. So when I write a Kafka source, what basically happens is this Kafka source is going to listen on a particular Kafka topic. And once I receive the message on this Kafka topic, it's going to send to a particular service. It could be a Knative service or it could be a Kubernetes service. That's the first thing which always write them. Once we have this here, so I also have a topic creator. This is a normal thing which we create. 
and then also have a trigger. let me go here and then there's a processor which is nothing but your camel route camel route in a yaml format which is called as a camel source in knative way so what you basically do here is i take the uh just that's coming into the kafka browser and the kafka topic and then i kind of split this using content based pattern content based router pattern where if the message saying if it's less than carbohydrates less than then I'm going to put it as a low sugar level. That's what I'm tagging this headers here. And then if it's going to be high, then it's going to be high sugar level, etc. etc. This is typical camel processing. Your camel thing which is written here, the camel routes written in a YAML way here. That's what I do with the processor. Once it gets to the processor, so the triggers basically gets the thing from the processor. Right? That's going to be a default broker. If you see sometime back when I label the namespace for Knative eventing. It automatically creates two pods. That's what you see on my thing. There's a default broker and default broker ingress. This is what get created. And now what I'm doing here is once the thing got processed by my foods processor from the topic, from the Kafka topic, you see here, I'm good processing it from the fruits topic. Once it got processed from there, it goes to the sugary fruits thing where the ingress kind of filters all the fruits, which is going to be of low sugar, high sugar or medium sugar. And then it's going to send this data to the subscriber, which is going to be a fruits event display subscriber, right? It's going to be, it could be any service or it could be even another channel or another topic or anything. In this case, I'm used a subscriber to be a service and it sends these things to this particular service. That's the exact flow which happens right now here. And so another key question that the audience has is how much caffeine do you drink to speak this fast? Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I actually, uh, <laughs> that's that's kind of thing. Like, so the only thing what happened to me today is like, so I need to show you much lot of things, uh, and I have a lot of ground to cover, and I have very less time. So that's the only reason why I have to speak a little bit faster. I want, I decided not to speak faster, but I have I have to speak faster today. So no other go. I'm sorry. So I don't. In fact, I should say maybe uh, four four cups of coffee a day. So that's that's the thing which I drink. Four cups of coffee a day. Good grief. Yeah. <laughs> Like uh, so, think, um, that's so pretty Alex, much I have, buddy. Yeah. So Alex, uh, Alex was trying to double check. So we have the processor connecting to the broker. Well, basically, the broker and the topic are feeding the processor, which then feeds the low sugar trigger, which eventually feeds right. the event display. Does that sound about right? Absolutely. That's right. That's exactly right. Okay. And did the, did it come up? Did it work? Uh, I think I did not see the messages coming up. I think, uh, let me try it once more. I think it should ideally come up. So let me push it once more here. Uh, and then see if that comes up. It goes to my so processor. There, I think my producer the producers created, yeah. Creating, yeah, so that's getting created. And then I should get the thing up there. So let me at least see if I get it in the uh, thing. Uh, or let me also see if there is any error on the way. Um, like you see this one? getting filtered and coming up here. Um, probably that's sort of something which have eaten up my stuff earlier on. Let me see if that comes up here. And it does not come here. Stern default, uh, I should ideally have this coming up. Uh, there, the filter is still also, starting. There was yeah. also a ton of interest in your overall terminal here. Uh, we were talking about on the chat that you're using the fish shell, but uh, iTerm2, are you using Tmux also? Yes, this is going to be this. The the whole thing is using a fish shell with uh, with the Tmux as backed in. That's where I'm able to split my screens up, um, and then um, I considered fish is going to be much faster compared to your your ZFH and Bash. So I started to use fish for that, uh, so that like the, your shell is much faster, and I get a nice uh, programmatic way of setting your variables and other stuff. Um, so and fish item two, and then uh, Tmux all put together. Okay. And we do have to, unfortunately, finish up here and wrap things up. Another question about why not use the Kafka Helm chart for Nico? And uh, so uh, in this case, how did you deploy Kafka? You actually used the Sturm Z operator for right. Kafka? Yep. Right. Let me show that here. So I think this is the Sturm Z operator. Uh, uh, quickly, I can just show it up. So this is my going to be my cluster architecture. I have a very minimal uh, cluster stuff. So this is done using Sturm Z operator. So the only big advantage I see is like I can Helm and other stuff. So, but uh, what I heard from my Kafka friends is that like it, it's really hard to kind of set up Kafka anywhere, right? Because you have to have Zookeeper and other things synchronized and all these stuff. So what StreamZ does when I do this way, like it takes care of making all the synchronization happen behind the scenes. That's how I showed. I started with one replica earlier, but after that, when I was doing my session, I just increased the replicas to two. That's where you see those replicas happening there. So I had some 
issues earlier today morning my replicas were not synced up when i was trying my demos probably the, i think the same thing is happening today as well during the demo so this is what happens the replicas comes up and then you can just increase and decrease it quite easily so uh, to be very honest i have not tried helm chart be happy to try that to see how that works as well okay uh, and this is the Red Hat way. Kind of, I just added a, a link to the chat on the operator in question. So that is the kind of the the way we see Kubernetes being handled, right? So basically, operators that are always on, always listening, always monitoring, and ensuring that your brokers stay up, your Zoom stay up. It also handles dealing with topics as well as users and all that sort of thing. So it basically provides automation around a Kafka broker in addition to the base install, which is what you get. So definitely check out that StreamZ uh, operator for that. That is definitely cool. One of those things we focus on a lot. Kamesh, I thank you for your time. We are over time at this point. Uh, it was awesome. Everybody loved that live coding demo. And again, the key question was, how many cups of coffee does this man drink? They were also <laughs> debating if it was Red Bull or now we're talking about, James talking about how many Coke Zeros he has per day. Eight Coke Zeros per day. Good no, grief. No, no, no Coke good. Zeros. Just, just, just Indian coffee. <laughs> Indian coffee. Fantastic. Well, we are totally out of time. We have to get here, but I thank you guys all for hanging out with us and hanging out with us on the chat. If you have more questions, feel free to hit up Kamesh or myself via email or via Twitter. That's you can definitely find us from that perspective. And then we are all done. Thank you so much, Kamesh. And thanks, Burr, and thanks everyone for attending my session. Please do drop me a note on your book, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Take care. Have a great day.